What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Red's Exotic where I do exotic pet feeding tutorials, guides, and exotic pet vlogs. So today we're going to be doing some isopods. Isopods. So I got a package today of a, I think it's a powder orange, powder orange um, isopods. And I'm going to be showing you guys what I use for substrate like how to make your own substrate and basically how to care for like you know basic isopods like basic breeds like you know your dwarf whites your dairy cows and all that random shenanigans so yeah let's get down to uh back to the table so we got that powder orange so they're pretty cool i'm gonna put their scientific name somewhere up here this is gonna be the package that i just arrived today and this is gonna be the isopod that's gonna be working on with one of my uh new enclosures that I'm gonna show you guys how to make so here you guys go they're pretty cute look at that so these types of isopods um, this species they breed like rabbits so yeah I'm gonna be enjoying um, working with them look at that they're just everywhere so I don't know how I'm gonna get it off with this uh, wood chunks wood chunks or whatever so anyways let's move that to the side this is gonna be the enclosure we're working with. It's like a cube, I'm um, exactly sure what's the measurement. But what I did was, so I drilled like hole here and then sawed it in half into a square. And then I added like mesh, some mesh that you'd use for, for like your screen doors to keep mosquitoes out. So I did two, two sets of those inside here. So just in case like, you know, small little isopods would like, they won't escape easily. And so like, cause usually with my isopods, I put springtails right here. So I put springtails and then I glue gunned it to where it just stays there firm. So we're gonna work with this, see? So it's like a huge hole, enough ventilation for all of them. And usually I put like a heat pad on the bottom so it gives them that heat. And I would put some soil up to like this top this high to where they can choose if they want to go to where it's super hot down there or they can just go up a little bit to where they get that right temperature so yeah this is one of those enclosures we're gonna work with today i think it's pretty sick you can visually see them i have to clean this off but i just pre-drilled it the other day all right now we're gonna work on my floor i guess i'm gonna show you guys how i make that isopod substrate so first a little bit of cocoa peat and cocoa husk and you see that like weird texture over there it's pretty smooth so we're gonna use this as kind of like the sub substrate like a substitute but our main substrate is this it's a jungle mix it's mostly used for like reptiles and all that stuff so this is gonna be our main substrate and then you'll need some leaf litter, you know? Doesn't matter as long as it's treated, you boiled it and you know, you can either boil it or freeze it so it removes all that parasites that would like infect your isopod colony. So yeah, leaf litter, doesn't matter which type of leaf. And then we have some activated carbon. So, or activated charcoal carbon, you know? And then I'd mix like a little bit of this on my substrate mix. And then I'm not picky with this, but usually I use like wood chips just in case it like decays and gives that isopod a place to like hide or just in case you like, you know, some decaying matter so they can eat. And then that last but not least, we have some terrarium moss. Basically your sphagnum moss, doesn't matter which brand or whatever you pick, Spanish moss or regular sphagnum moss. As long as you have a, a moss, basically, gives them that humidity, you know, that they need. So yeah, let's mix this up. So for now, I'm not gonna make like a huge, huge batch because I'm not gonna use all of it. I'm just gonna like mix like a little bit of it in a bucket or container, I guess. So what I did was like one third of like cocoa peat and then basically the rest would be like two thirds of the jungle mix, the reptile soil. This one's basically mixed up with some fear or I don't know how to pronounce it and then sphagnum moss peat or another alternative would be like you know your garden soil as long as it doesn't have like pesticides to it and then you know you can use vermiculate another substitute and then you can mix that up with your cocoa peat then throw in some wood chucks wood chips or whatever and then after that wood chip okay I don't even know what I'm saying activated charcoal 
And then some leaf litter. Usually I shred it down. So right there, right there. And then what I usually do is I crumple up the leaf litter and spread it evenly. And then we toss in some terrarium moss. Just spread it evenly. There we go. You're not gonna need much. Just like spread it evenly and then you just mix it up. Just try and get the chunks out of each soil just to make it even and crisp when you mix it up. There you go, you see that fine mix. And I've seen some people add like um, different types. I've seen people add like some weird sand, a couple of sand. Um, I've seen people add like just garden soil and then vermiculate and cocoa husk. I've seen people do that. But for me, this is what works best for all of my isopods. I've never had a problem with it. As long as I give them that right heat, that right decaying matter, and they all just explode in population. So this is the substrate that I use for all of my isopods and I've never had a problem with it. All right, let's get back on top. Anyways, so here's the container and we got that powder orange over there. So now what you want to do is I usually scoop it up with my hand just to get the feel of it if it's right or not. And then put it over here. See? There we go. That's already plenty enough of them. So you got the leaf litter, got some wood chips where they can hide, they can pick wherever they want to go. Got some activated carbon charcoal over there and then some sphagnum moss. And then usually is what I do. Since, yeah, since I have like a heat pad on the bottom, I usually spray it like halfway here, flip it over on the side, and then lay it flat like that. And then I get this, spray this. So like kind of like the bottom gets a bit soaked and then push it back on the top. And then I do it on the other side. I grab it over there. And you see how there's like a bit of gap. I flatten it. And then I spray it, spray over there, and then I push back the top and make it even in the middle, make it even all across the board. And now, so you have your bottom a bit moist, you have it moist, and on the top it's kind of dry, so they have the option if they want it super moist or super dry. So, yeah. All right, now this is gonna be a pain in the butt. We're gonna have to separate each and every one of these isopod because I don't wanna use this um, wood here. I wanna move them on my own. I wanna move them to the new substrate that I made for them. I would keep a couple of those wood chips just in case, you know, they might feel unfamiliarized with the new environment that I'm gonna be putting them in. So I wanna put something that they're familiar with. So, right there. All right, it's gonna take a bit of a long process i know there's like 20 count of them here so that's i have no idea somewhere might as well just do it by hand or something like that i don't know all right this is really hard and annoying i just want to like scoop all of them out or something nope never mind there's a lot of them man all right i'm just gonna continue this later i feel like there's still a lot of them in the bottom but yeah let's get back to this um isopods here all right, not gonna lie, there's a lot of them here. I would probably like upgrade it into a shoebox, but this is pretty good for now. Up until like I, like a month later, I'll probably upgrade it into a shoebox. I was expecting a bit more or less, but I guess I paid pretty good for this number of them. And then I almost forgot to add. So you need like a cork bark. So usually just put it on top of the top of everything. So they'll, they'll basically group up on the bottom of this cork bark. That's basically for more, most isopods that I ever keep, so they'll just group up on the very top and stay there for a while. But this type of species of isopod just, I don't know man, they're the most active I've ever had for an isopod. But yeah, I'll show you guys uh, another example of my other isopods in a bit. And here's like a good example of my infamous Kibaris sp Pak Chong. They originated in Thailand in the caves, so that's basically from what I know online, I read so far. And see, most of my isopods I keep with springtail. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but right there, small little buggers. So, as you can see, I always add like a cork bark on top. And then, you see, they're hiding right there. They're hiding in one spot. Oh, one guy fell off. But yeah, you know, so basically any isopod species you keep always have a cork bark on top. It makes them feel safe, secure, and then, from what I know, they reproduce faster from it. 
because they meet up in one spot or I guess because it's the only dry spot and it's on top so that's from what I know that's how they breed faster but I don't know maybe you guys can tell me oh yeah I forgot we got the we got the label maker guys let's just uh print this off so this is their scientific name and now let's grab my phone where we got the Nimbut app which is this Chinese brand or whatever and now let's turn it on here comes the annoying noise right there so annoying anyways let's create a tag new then let's type it up all right so we finished typing it up let's go align it right there see right there in the center and then let's hit print then let's increase the density and here we go right there it's gonna be the most satisfying part Right there. Looks beautiful. All right, let's get back on top. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about this isopod, this specific species of isopod that I bought. Took a while to get here. Um, took, it was like a week and or so or whatever. So yeah, if you guys want, I'll put the link down below to this um, label maker if you guys you know, ever want it. Also, I'll put like the links down to what, what, all the substrate that I use and the mixes that I use and like, you know, I'll put like the list down so you guys have an idea of what I'm working with. So yeah, thank you guys for watching for this care guide of, you know, basically isopods. Um, this is basically for my standard care for most of my isopods and I've never had a problem. You know, all of my cultures exploded, even the springtails. And yeah, this is right here, the powder orange. I'll probably move some springtails, that new colony that I set up. So, hope you guys stay tuned for the next uh, few episodes. So this Sunday I'll probably be in a reptile expo. So you guys should stay tuned for that for next week in my next video. So yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys for watching. Oh my god, I just witnessed a Pak Chong breeding guys right there. Right there. They're breeding and I don't want to disturb them. So probably going to close it. But three of them or something are fighting for a mate. Music.